David. Welcome home. No matter where you find yourself on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. And we promise to demonstrate that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior by our actions and our words. And we also promise to look to you to see how you are walking this life of faith and we can learn from each other. And we come together from different walks of life to this one place we are connected by our baptism, not by what we have done, but what Christ has done for us. So as we remember our baptisms and give thanks, we know that we are loved, redeemed, forgiven, and know that we come together to worship God. So on behalf of the session of First Presbyterian Church, Bowling Green, Ohio, and it all of you welcome and glad that you have chosen to follow the nudge of God to be here in worship. There are lots and lots of announcements. First, reminding you that we are a more like Presbyterian church, dedicated and committed to the inclusion of all, particularly the LGBTQIA plus community, which has been harmed so badly by the Christian church. 
Thanks to all who participated last week in the fellowship and the uh, mission fair. It was a huge success. So thank you for going down. And there's still opportunities to volunteer downstairs. So at the uh, end of worship fellowship, you can be downstairs and sign up to help with ushering or liturgist or uh, camera, uh, many different ways that we serve Christ here. I hope you all received a wonderful newsletter put together by Tammy Schnecker. And in that, please, please read each article. Um, the first page is my page. I'm celebrating two years with you next week. And uh, we're going to celebrate uh, what, um, what the Saunders have built and, and continue to grow with that. Articles about the uh, pulpit nominating committee, the advancements there made the session, and the presbytery have uh, allowed me to sign on for one more year, and they took the, uh, the, uh, the restriction uh, that was on the first two that I could not apply for the position. They have now allowed me to do that, and my PIF, a personal information form, is ready and ready to go. The green team has an article. Did you want to say anything more about that, Gail? <laughs> just, just the wonderful stuff that you've been doing and anybody want to help with it, it's a great article. The Peace and Global Witness Offering is next week. That's next week. That's next week, yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to, to do that. Yeah. The, uh, the mission committee oversees the mission committee oversees the special appeals uh, offerings that we take four times a year. Next week is the Peace and Global Witness offering, which we are able to direct 25% up to a local uh, entity which works with social justice. Um, but we have decided to direct that 25% to Lust Street Village. Um, we talked about that a little bit before our mission funds to them um, last year, and uh, we're hoping to be able to hold a fundraiser for them in the future. In the meantime, there's an open house that they have next week. What you will see is the beginning of a village of 20, uh, 20 uh, small houses, about 400 square feet each. And what will happen is uh, people, low-income individuals or families can apply to in the house, they'll pay a small rent, they'll do community service, and after seven years they will be able to own the house so they can build the equity over a period of time. Uh, yeah, it's really nice. So you can go up, it's, up, it's on Monroe Street in Toledo, somewhere on Monroe Street. Right next to the Monroe Street United Methodist Church. <laughs> the address is in your uh, newsletter if you want to check that out. <laughs> so you can go see it, and in two weeks, David will not be here, but uh, Reverend Larry Clark will be here. He's working with the Bluff Street Village, and I imagine he'll tell us more about that at that time. And you'll see in the newsletter an opportunity this afternoon or tomorrow to go to Bluff Street Village and work in the tiny house. I was there yesterday morning cleaning windows, and the construction is almost finished, and we mop the floors and break the paint off the wall. So uh, there's still opportunities looking here for tomorrow as well as uh, this afternoon. Uh, the safe zone, you'll see that we're looking at a safe zone training uh, in November. PW Fall Luncheon, CE with Michelle being here as interim DCE and Bree with the youth. Looking at the rekindle retreat of the youth. These are just the articles, COVID test strips uh, in, are, are available uh, in Michelle's office. Um, knowing that, uh, if you want to go to the retreat that my wife is leading uh, in two weeks, that uh, carpool together, it'll be a wonderful experience of reflecting on your life in, in, uh, in three days, be able to the seasons of your life. It's, it's an incredible, moving, spiritual experience. I encourage everyone. We have a, uh, also, we're welcoming in, in the newsletter, welcoming our new members. And there is a new member here who didn't get her goodie bag last week. So, Kathy Sweeney. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. 
that in our bag we do have our Christ welcomes all mug plus candy, um, a, a directory, a pictorial directory in the most uh, recent. Um, it's still outdated because we had two new members come in last week. So uh, continue to, to read those. Uh, there are lots, lots of information there. Continued with the finance that has our QR codes. Make those contributions. That's great. Backpack project calendar, birthdays, and all. Next week the um, will be World Communion Sunday. It will also be our confirmation class celebration. Uh, they're having a banquet on Saturday. It'll be uh, it's being catered. Uh, so we're excited about that. Um, Peace and Global Witness offering as well. I want to welcome Tammy Schinker, who you know very well by uh, when you call to the office or you've uh, been working uh, with this church for maybe my uh, last 25 years. Uh, Tammy is here. She's grumbling because I asked her to, no, I told her to be here. Um, <laughs> So she's mad at me. But uh, thank you for her family that is also Vesta here. Are there any other announcements? The biggest announcement is read. <laughs> read your, uh, your newsletter and, uh, and engage with us. Uh, the youth are meeting at 3 o'clock today at the Wood County Animal Shelter, right, Jen? Postponing. Postponing. Okay. Animals are on their own this afternoon. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, we, as we gather together, one and all from different walks, I bid you the peace of Jesus Christ. So may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Pass the peace of Jesus Christ with one another.
morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Join me in the call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us worship the creator of this world and all the world we have not seen. Let us give thanks and seek God's help as we live in this world. Come, Holy Spirit, and move us to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Join me in prayer. O oh God, God, we, we confess, confess the things that we have, we have done, done that stand between you and us, and that stand, stand between us and others. We, we confess, confess the things we have, have not done, done that might have strengthened our connection with each other and brought us closer to you. We have not chosen the things that make for peace and the ways that make for justice in your world. We have turned from your way and chosen our own paths. We have been too sure of our own answers and too impatient to listen to the questions and answers of us. For these and the sins we confess silently in your presence. 
forgive, forgive us. us. Pray. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though our eyes are like fire, far. they shall be like snow. No. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Thanks be to God. Some of it may be a little shocking, so let's be prepared to hear the word of God. Let us pray. Lord, we come to your word, which is ever among us and ever challenging us. Help us to come with fresh minds and eyes and ears and hearts that we will receive your word for us today. Break down any barrier that keeps us from hearing your word for us today and then give us the courage to respond with grace, compassion, love. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. A reading from James, the fifth chapter, verses 13 through 20. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Here ends the, the scripture reading. Let me invite Adrian to the moment for education. Good morning. Sorry, I forgot how loud these are. It's 
fun to be back up here. So this morning, I want to talk just a little bit about a different Bible verse. This is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And actually, I'm going to skip around just a little bit. Now, you all know the story about how the hands and the feet and, and all the pieces of the body all work together, right, for the, the body of, of the church. But there are a couple of things that stood out to me in this. And one of those that, in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, every single one of them, just as he wanted them to be. And then the second part of that, and wrap it down in verse 22, on the contrary, the parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable. The parts of the body that we don't notice, you know, like our shoulders and our elbows, our knees, those are indispensable because they have to work as a whole, just like we have to work as a whole in the body of Christ. Now, I'm telling you about this because a lot of times we forget about all the different things that happen in the church. And even though I know she'll hate the fact that this is all about Tammy, we need to remember that she is an indispensable part of the body of Christ here at our congregation. And we are very happy to have you here as part of that. Tammy has, I've known Tammy for over 16 years. Um, she's known Daniel her entire life. We have been through lots of things together, ups, downs. I think three different sets of pastors at this point. Um, and she has done all of that with a smile and a wonderful heart. She has served because this is her passion, this is her calling to serve our congregation. And I know that our congregation is stronger because of this one little part of the church body that we don't always think about because she always just makes it happen. And I am very happy that you are here, and I'm very proud of all the work that you've done. And I think you're pretty awesome. But you don't need to take just my word for it because there are some other people that would like to say some things. Tammy, I remember when you arrived here, <laughs> and we've been through a lot together. There are several people in this church that were here when you arrived, but there are many people in this church that have no idea how much you have done and given to this church over 25 years. We've been... Huh? And me, when I served... I love you, dear. You've helped me a lot. Thank you. Tammy, I don't even know what to say because we've known you for a long time and I've worked with you for a long time and gone, got to know you as such a helpful, caring, thoughtful person. And I don't know what we do without you in the office. We can always turn to you and rely on you to get projects done and help us out with stuff. Um, you're just always there. And you reach beyond the office with your cards and, and thoughtful things that you do. So thank you for being with us and sticking it out with us for all these years. Hi, Tammy. I've been with you for the last 25 years. I've seen you frequently, and I've listened to you frequently. And I've come many times when there were ups and downs in your life, and I was there to listen, and I hope that was helpful. <clears throat> I also brought my dog, which I know was helpful. <laughs> I hope that you continue and enjoy the rest of the time that you have with us. I've known Miss Tammy my entire life. <laughs> some things I remember, some things I don't. But what I do remember is that she's a fantastic person. And I'm not sh I'm pretty sure I would not be the same person I am today. I do not have so much influence so far. Hi, Tammy. I've only known you maybe six years now, but I always know that when I come through that back door of the church, that you're there, you always have time, no matter what is going on, and sometimes it's pretty chaotic. 
um, with everything that you do, but you always have time to listen to a story or to something that's personal. So you've opened your heart not only to me, but I know to a lot of other people here. And we're very grateful, Tammy. Thank you. Tammy, you can't see me. Hi. <laughs> um, Tammy, you make us all feel like a part of your family. Every time we interact with you, you are the true definition of servant leader. We appreciate everything you do. You do it with such just care, just to make sure that we get everything we need in whatever you have to do to make it happen. You do it without question and without fail, and we truly appreciate it. Thank you. As unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. <laughs> Tammy, um, you spoil us. <laughs> you do. You give us a deadline and then we fail to do it and you make it work. We give you more than can ever get into a newsletter and you make it work. We don't hit deadlines with bulletin and you make it work. I am disorganized, amen and you make it work. People say, David, you're, you run this church, and I said, no way. Tammy, you make it work. And we are deeply appreciative. You put up with us, you uh, laugh with us, you cry with us, you have given yourself to us, and we thank you that you make it work. I am honored to be able to present to you a, a little token of our appreciation for 25 years in one day, but who's counting? <laughs> but I do hope that it will be many, many more. she has done for our church family to bring us together and keep us straight. Watch over each and every one of us, keep us safe, and keep us in each other's memories and hearts. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There is a reception at the end of service downstairs, and yes, there will be cake, um, cupcakes. Yes.
We come to our gospel reading, which is a continuation of what we've been reading for the last couple of weeks in Mark. This is Mark chapter 9, and this is, this is a tough passage. Of course, I said that last week, too. But Mark is trying to hone in on something very important about what it means to follow Jesus Christ. And it's not all glamour. It's not all easy. In fact, it's ex extremely difficult and leads us into discomfort. But there is a God of peace who invites us to work for peace and God's promise to always be with us. So let's hear um, Mark 9, 38 through 50 and Jesus and his disciple John are carrying on. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone throwing demons out in your name, and we tried to stop him because he wasn't following us. Jesus replies, Don't stop him. No one who does powerful acts in my name can quickly turn around and curse me. Whoever isn't against us is for us. I assure you that whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will certainly be rewarded. As for whoever causes these little ones who believe in me to trip and fall into sin, it would be better for them to have a huge stone hung around their necks and be thrown into the lake. If your hand causes you to fall into sin, Chop it off. It's better for you to enter into life crippled than to go away with two hands into the fire of hell, which can't be put out. If your foot causes you to fall into sin, chop it off. It's better for you to enter life lame than to be thrown into hell with two feet. If your eye causes you to fall into sin, tear it out. It's better for you to enter God's kingdom with one eye than to be thrown into hell with two. That's a place where worms don't die and the fire never goes out. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt loses its saltiness, how will it become salty again? Maintain salt among yourselves. And keep peace with each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Called to be disciples. When the disciples criticized someone for casting out demons in Jesus' name because the man was not following us, Jesus is forced to address one of the most common and destructive tendencies concerning humans and power. Already the disciples had forgotten or conveniently misunderstood the radical inclusiveness of God's reign as they seek to limit membership to their special club, the Apostles. The other man is not one of them and should therefore be stopped. Now I'm afraid that this is a tendency to which we can all relate. At least I can. The number and variety of communities that work in Jesus' name reveals that there are an infinite ways to live and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. But we just can't seem to be able to work together. Heck, there are eight different Presbyterian denominations in the United States of America alone. Eight. Do you know them? Evangelical Presbyterian Church, Presbyterian Church of America, Orthodox Presbyterian Church, Bible Presbyterian Church, Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church, Korean Presbyterian Church, Cumberland Presbyterian Church, and of course the best one and the right one, the Presbyterian Church in the United States of America. 
But seriously, this is sad. Diversity in itself is not a problem, as Jesus explains. The danger arises when one, any one of those communities profess to be the best or the only true church and the exclusive bearer of salvation. That's, that's where the danger lies, when it becomes exclusive. John said, we tried to stop him because he wasn't following us. The lesson is so important that Jesus underscores it for the next two paragraphs. Using the metaphor of the body, Jesus insists that it's better to physically remove that which impedes the spread of the good news and inner life lame than to put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me. Now, cover the children's ears. He talks about cutting off contaminated parts of the body. He's talking about self-mutilization. Cut off the hand, pluck out the eye, sever the foot, purify yourself. It's harsh words. But notice that this is self-judgment. Not our cutting someone else's hand off or plucking someone else's eye out or severing someone else's foot. The judgment is harsh because it is self-judgment. We're not so good at self-judgment. We'd rather judge the other. Put them down, call them names. I might be the only one in the room with this problem, but I don't think so. Tammy's going to help me with the next illustration. You forgot that, didn't you? (coughs) Come on up to the lectern. And Corky, this is where you're going to try to get both of us. Good luck. Max Licato tells the story of overhearing two travelers who run into each other. One noticed that the other is carrying a Bible. And I want you to know this is my King James Version. The conversation went like this. Are you a believer? Yes. Virgin birth? I accept it. Deity of Jesus? No doubt whatsoever. Status of humanity. We are sinners in need of grace. Return of Christ. Imminent. Bible. Inspired word of God. This is great. The church. The body of Christ. Okay. Conservative or liberal? Conservative. Me too. Heritage. Southern Congregationalist, Holy Son of God, Dispensationalist, Triune Convention. I can't believe it. Me too. What branch? Premillennial, non charismatic, King James One Cup Communion. No way. Me too. Is your pulpit wooden or fiberglass? Fiberglass, of course. You heretic. (laughs) Curtain. Thank you. (laughs) We laugh, (laughs) but we should be crying. We divide ourselves and separate ourselves from others because the skin is a different color or we can't understand their language or they part their hair on the wrong side if they even have hair. Or they choose to express their faith a little differently. Or what it means to what to follow Christ. This passage deals with our relations with those with whom we differ. I must admit that this is a hard passage for me to hear. And it might be tough for me because I can so easily identify with John. John is a good Presbyterian. Yep, that's PCUSA all the way. 
because he is so concerned with doing things decently and in order, doing things by the book with the right credentials and by doing ministry his way. So for me to be self-revealing, I get so put out when I hear local campus ministers boasting about how many souls they have saved for Christ at their last meeting. It just makes my skin crawl. I disagree with their method of proselytizing and their message of fear and their arrogance at claiming that they saved anyone. See, I know I easily judge people by their credentials and I often think I know who should be in and who should be out. And then I hear Jesus say, David, do not stop him. Whoever is not against us is for us. That's hard for me to hear. And I need to cut it out. This text brings my arrogance into check and calls for me to quit being so quick to judge others by their beliefs by their mythology, by their dress, by their social status, by their sexual orientation, or how they voted in the last presidential election, or if they're vaccinated or not, by their educational degrees, whatever it is that I judge people and put them on the outside. Jesus said, whoever is not against us is for us. Friends, I have a lot to learn. The beloved community of God that Jesus ushers in here is Mark's in Mark's gospel is so much larger than how I would normally define it. And I'm encouraged by Edwin Markham's poem. I've read this before. He drew a circle that shut me out. Rebel, heretic, thing to flout. But love and I had wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. We draw lines. We pick sides. We push people out. And Christ's work suffers whenever we do that. Jesus seeks that the thirsty get a drink. So here's a question. Are we a hindrance to Christ's work, limiting who is in? At the end of the service, we will sing, let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Now, the peace of Jesus Christ has already been working, but let our examination of how we are going to live in peace begin by a deep reflection on who we are and what we say and what we do. Let it begin with me. Christ will be known in the powerful act of giving someone who is thirsty a drink of water. God's will will be done when the prodigal child returns. Christ will be known in the breaking down of barriers that separate us. God's will will be done right here in the acts of compassion and grace offered to those who need love. Christ will be known in our welcoming others in. Together, we can do great things for God. Together, we can build God's beloved community when we work together for peace. May we offer Christ to the world so that Christ will be known and God will be glorified. For those who have ears to hear, amen.
In your bulletin, you will see the affirmation of faith, which comes from the confession of 1967. And if you remember those days, it was a time of civil rights. A lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of demonstrations. And this is where our church took a stand and said, we can do better than this. So let us stand together and say what it is believe using these words together. God has created the peoples of the earth to be one universal family. In reconciling love, God overcomes the barriers between sisters and brothers and breaks down every form of discrimination based on racial or ethnic difference, real or imaginary. The church is called to bring human beings to receive and uphold one another as persons in all relationships of life, in employment, housing, education, leisure, marriage, family, church, and exercise of political rights. Therefore, the church labors for the abolition of all racial discrimination and ministers to those injured by it. Congregations, individuals, or groups of Christians who exclude, dominate, or patronize others, however subtly, resist the Spirit of God and bring contempt on the faith which they profess. Thank you. You may be seated. This is a time of joys and concerns. As Michelle hobbles up here, one of our concerns, a prayer for healing. I hope that those at home would have shared some concerns. We got some of those. Daisy Boyer, today is the day that the class of 2023 lost a very amazing person to suicide two years ago. He was a dear friend to everyone and cared deeply. She's asking for prayers for the family and friends. Bob and Joan Calicott worshiping from New York City. <laughs> Good morning from Terry Holt. Tammy, you are an amazing person, and I love you. Kara Leshway, congratulations, Tammy. Kathy Horger, Tammy, so sorely, so, uh, sorry we couldn't be there for your special tribute day on your 25th anniversary. You have served through a lot of personal loss and always come back smiling. You have a beautiful soul and a lot of internal strength. Your parents would be so proud to see you. Be honored today. They raised an exceptional human being, and yes, the red hair is your crowning glory. Judy Martin, we love you, Tammy. Thank you for all that you do. Mary Beelan, Tammy, you have a wonder. Of, you are a wonder of wonders. Miss working with you. Michelle McDonald, after a lot of happen, a lot's happening this week. Pray for her medication and other needs. Are there other joys and concerns? Kathy? I'm not used to doing this anymore. I'm old now. 21 years old. Who thinks that's old? Who thinks that's old? Huh? I, do you remember when you were 21? Barely. As you may know, my, our mother passed away last Sunday, and her funeral was yesterday, um, 100 years old. And um, I just want to thank everybody for all the condolences and love that we received from everyone. It means a lot to me and to feel part of this community. Thank you. The flowers up front are from, her, from Clara Bell Garn's uh, memorial service. So prayers for Nancy Heth, Kathy Sweeney, and their sister Diane and their loss. A beautiful service yesterday about love that uh, your mother lived. Uh, my, my honor. Stuart and Pam Orr continue to ask for prayer for, for them. Pam has been in the hospital. She's out now. Um, and as well as uh, Stuart's father was in the hospital. So... It's called a sandwich generation when you're being pressed on all sides. Um, Olivia Dye, who is 
Michelle's fiance's daughter is still in the hospital. Mike Shanner, any word there? Okay. My sister-in-law begins radiation soon. Continue to pray for Dennis and Judy Knoll, uh, Bruce and Mary Warham, uh, Jenny Saylor. Uh, I'm doing a funeral this afternoon at Collingwood Presbyterian Church. Ernie, 93 years old, and his bride is 100 years old. Um, and he died three weeks ago, and we're doing the memorial service this afternoon. And continue to pray for Jason Seibert. Uh, end of his two years in prison is coming up. So uh, looking forward to uh, welcoming him home. And as always, please pray for the pastor nominating committee as they do their, their work. Are there any other joys and concerns? That's a lot. Thank you, Thank you Bree, old lady. Let's pray. God, we thank you, thank you, thank you for the witness that Jesus Christ is the resurrection through the work and the life that Tammy Schnicker has offered this church for 25 years. What a blessing that it's not just a job, but it's a calling that she has offered to serve us. Thank you for the voices that have said thank you. Thank you for the ways that this afternoon, after the service, we will be able to say thanks again. And Lord, there is so much going on in this world. We named names. Clarabelle Garn, a hundred, almost well, two weeks short, shy of being 101. The life she has lived, the witness that she has offered, the children that she has nurtured, the grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Continue to be with Stuart, particularly as his wife has been in the hospital, his father has been in the hospital, and his mother is still in need of care. Hold Michelle and all that she is going through, healing of the foot, physical therapy, the struggles with work, and be with Olivia as she continues to stay in the hospital but should be out this week. Continue to offer your healing hand on Mike Shaner, Mary Frances Moss, Judy Knoll, Mary Warham. And hold Jenny as she grieves the loss of her husband. And Lord, hold Jason as he begins a time of transition, as he will be released into a community. So help there be love and acceptance and compassion. And Lord, continue to watch over the, the pastor nominating committee as we prepare for the next pastor, installed pastor of this incredible congregation. We are yours and we seek to serve you. So help us to cut out the things that keep us from serving you and help us to be whole in our service to you. Through Christ we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So as Heather plays, now all the woods are sleeping, corral number 50 by Bach. We have an opportunity to think about all the ways that God has blessed us and continue to ask that we be a blessing to others. May we be an answer to someone else's prayer is the way I like to state it. And we do that with our time, with our energy, and with our treasures. We trust the session and how we spend the money that you so graciously extend to us through checks and through QR codes, whatever that really means. And as we sit and ponder, let us think of how we will serve Christ.
that they will be multiplied and moved out to serve you. And bless the giver that we may continue to serve you in all that we do. Through Christ we pray. Amen. When I asked, uh, we're told Tammy to be our litter to one consolation, that she got to pick the hymns. This is for her. For whoever, is not against us, what did he say? Whoever is not against us is for us. You were listening. We continue to judge others and discount them. And Christ says, stop it. Cut it out. And it's not easy. And so I'm going to tell you again the same benediction I've done for two years. And I want you to hear it in a minute. May God bless you with discomfort of the easy answers, the half-truths, of superficial relationships, so that you will live deeply and from the heart. And may God bless you with anger and injustice, oppression, and exploitation of others so that you work for justice, freedom, and peace. And may God bless us with tears to shed with those who mourn. Who are incarcerated, who are oppressed. So that we will reach our hands out to them and turn their mourning into joy. <laughs> And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that, yes, you and I can make a difference in this old world by doing the things that others say cannot be done. So with all of God's blessings, go and share the peace of Christ.